Hello everyone, bringing you a video today talking about the British Army Boots Combat High, which is what the British Army issue when it finally got round to producing a high leg combat boot in the mid 1980s. There have been experiments and trials in the early 1980s and the Boot Combat High was first introduced around 1983, but we'll talk a little bit more about that as the video progresses. And on that topic, we'll get into the main part of the video now and have a look at the boots and also some of the trials information which is available. So before we consider the boots in detail, we'll first consider a couple of articles in Soldier magazine which sort of set the scene for these. This is April 1981, as you can see in the top right corner there. If we open this up, inside we have a report from the SCRDE Colchester, which is the Army's development uh, research uh, establishment, essentially. So we have various things here. We have obviously riot visors. We have the boot combat high here, which is what we're going to focus on. New number two dress, obviously Mark II 1958 pattern here in nylon. So various different things being considered here. Uh, I think there's also details of the Mark VI helmet coming into use as well. Uh, oh, actually, yes, no, sorry, that's it. This image here, you can see prototypes of the Mark VI ballistic nylon helmet there. But it mainly, what we're mainly concerned with is the fact that this is mentions the boot combat high in its embryonic stage with an intended rollout date of 1982-1983. What we're mainly concerned with here are the Boots Combat High, and the article specifies that these are manufactured from a water-resistant leather. They are not to be shined, and as you can see here, acceptance for the Army is expected shortly as the High Combat Boot finished a year-long troop trial last autumn. It is likely to come into service towards the end of 1982 or possibly in 1983. And one more innovation, the sizing will be Mondo Point to NATO standard, so this is why you have the metric sizing of Boots Combat High. It's something that's noted with these. They do not come in UK sizes. They are always marked up on the sole in Mondo Point. And we'll also consider another article in the following month's copy of Soldier Magazine, May 1981. This concerns a trial with the advanced para course in Wales of the Boot Combat High, comparing it to the Boot DMS, obviously worn with putties here, as was still standard at the time. The gist of the article is that the, the boot combat high is far superior, and so it should be, being a high leg boot. We're going to get into the details of perhaps why it wasn't the panacea it was hoped to be during the course of the video. So some of the information used here is drawn from these articles in Soldier magazine. We'll get into having a look at the boots in more detail now. So here we have the initial pattern of boots combat high. And in terms of design, they are streets ahead of the DMS. The DMS was rightly heavily criticized following the Falklands War. It was a low boot, so it let in water. From that point of view, if you stepped above ankle height in water, uh, you were in for trouble. It would just overtop the boot. And also the manufacturing quality was abysmal. Uh, by this point, they were being made to a price, which is well known. Unfortunately, the boot combat high would suffer from that as well. And much as it is a better design, though it does have flaws, which we'll talk about in a minute, it was still being made to a price and from that point of view, they gained the nickname Boots Cardboard Horrible. There were some horror stories of the soles splitting and so forth, and just the quality of manufacture was not really what it should be. This is what happens when things are made to a price. You can see the details of the manufacture here, obviously no toe cap. You can see the side, side seam details here, similar to the DMS, the way the seam comes up there. You see the eyelets there. And you do have a pull tab at the rear to help these uh, to help pull these on, as you can see. Details of the heel and the, the back stay there, which we'll talk about a little bit more in just a minute. And the other side, as you can see there. And then we have the distinctive tread pattern, which is sometimes referred to as a, a tyre tread. One advantage that was touted for this was the fact it's easy to clean. And certainly I, I think this is a fairly good design of, of tread pattern. It is easy to get mud out of it from, from personal experience. I can say that it's very easy to just scrape mud from it. So from that point of view, it's good. You can see the Mondo Point sizing there, which was mentioned before. There are conversion tables available online, so it's not that difficult to work out what you need and keep a mental note of it when you're looking for these. If you're looking to buy them, just keep a mental note of what your metric sizing is when you're looking for these on, on stalls and so forth, because they are all marked in uh, metric on the sole there. Now, We've talked briefly about obviously the fact that the manufacturing quality of these was one of the letdowns. There was another problem with these, which is quite infamous, which you can actually see quite distinctively here, which is just at the back, just above this reinforcement, where, where the 
this piece, the heel piece comes around in this curved section here, there's a very distinct fold in the back stay. And this was found to be a major problem. It ended up giving men tendonitis in some instances by rubbing on the Achilles tendon. And there were various uh, ways that soldiers came up with for trying to, to deal with this. Some of them even included cutting the stitching on the back stay here uh, and trying to break in the boots in various ways uh, to prevent this from happening. Now, not everyone complained of this, so whether it's only some patterns of some manufacturers where perhaps the back stay wasn't of a stiff enough leather, I don't know. But certainly it was a noted problem, and it was a big enough problem that the British Army actually introduced a second pattern of these, which we're going to have a look at now. So here we have a pair of the, the second pattern of boots, Combat High. And if I put these up here, you can see that from ha having them like this, there's not a huge amount of difference to see. But if I lift them up here, you can see that I do have a difference in the style of the seams on the side here, the shape of the seams. We no longer have that curved piece up around the heel. See, this seam runs straight at the back, and then we have a back stay all the way down the back of the boot to the heel here. Now, you still have quite a hefty um, crease in the back there, but the intention of this modification was to try and alleviate this issue with the fold in the back of the heel. Otherwise, the design is essentially the same. You can see a better example of the tread there. These aren't as heavily worn as the other pair. You can see, again, the, the metric sizing there. So, this modification was introduced to try and alleviate that problem. And when the British Army actually changes a pattern to try and alleviate the problem, you know it must be a pretty big problem. Still have the pull loop on the back there. We look at the construction of the tongue and everything there. You can see, if I get this in the light, turn it around, you can see the, the construction details there of the tongue and everything. And that didn't change. As I say, it's, it's purely the, the change in the details at the rear here of the heel. So, this modification, I'm not entirely sure when it first appeared. Certainly, it would appear in photographs from the Gulf, 1990. You do see, obviously, the desert boot. That's a thing to mention, is these were worn extensively during the, the Gulf War, the boot combat high, that is, both uh, in its initial and, I believe, in this pattern. So they must have been introduced prior to that point. My understanding is that the second pattern would just be issued out as boots wore out, so you wouldn't have your semi-worn first pattern boots combat high taken off you and replaced with these. It was on a wastage basis, as is typical for the for army uh, issuing equipment. You don't get a new one until the one you have is worn out. These would then be in use right the way through the 90s until the introduction of the assault boot, which is a very different animal indeed, and a, a far superior boot again from this. So the boot combat high introduced initially uh, the intention of replacing the DMS and providing a much better waterproof high leg boot. In that regard, it did succeed to some degree but it was still bedeviled with manufacturing issues in terms of quality control, the quality of manufacture in the first place, and also with the initial pattern, the fold in the heel. So it wasn't the panacea that it was it was hoped it would be. We're going back to the introduction dates, just to, to run over dates again at the end here, I'd be very interested if anyone knows the actual date when these were introduced, the second pattern, to supplement and then replace the first pattern with obviously the modification to the heel. The initial pattern seemed to have entered production in a big way in 1982, and certainly footage from the Falklands in 1983, obviously the Falklands garrison post-war, you do see most of the men seem to be wearing boots combat high. So it would appear that through the mid-80s, the, the 1983 and the mid-80s, that sort of time period, there would have been a replacement of DMS boots with boots combat high. And these had been under development during the early 1980s, but of course hadn't been issued as a general issue by the time of the Falklands campaign, which is a shame because they probably would have done better than the DMS boot. For all their failings, they would have been a better option in the conditions which prevailed in the Falklands. So there we are. I hope you found it interesting looking at those. As I say, the boot combat high was a long time coming. The British Army stayed with the ankle boot long past the time that the majority of other military forces had moved on to high leg combat boots. Uh, and even then, obviously, it wasn't uh, the uh, ideal design it had hoped it would be, but nevertheless a step in the right direction. hope you found it interesting looking at that as I said before. If you have and you'd like to see more from the channel, please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, little notification button down below, which will of course alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel, you can. Both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And a massive thank you as ever to everybody who supports the channel using those methods. It's greatly appreciated, as I always say. Thank you very much indeed. 
you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below as well. But if you'd like to get in touch and you don't really use social media, there is of course an email address too. That's everything for this video, so until next time, bye for now.